Hello, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today I want to talk about uh, a couple of new stuff that's coming out, you know, like they actually have put out an official launch day. They've also put out like a web gacha event, but really what I really want to talk about is like the five stars. Who should we roll for? Because, you know, this is when we can start getting down into the details. I want to start talking about the characters. I want to start talking about their utility. I want to start talking about tier lists. You know what I'm saying? For you guys who are regular watchers for Princess Connect or PGR or whatever, like you guys already know I get into like the deep like the nitty gritty kind of stuff so that is exactly what we are going to do today in this video however let's start off with some a little bit of catch-up news I suppose unfortunately I actually haven't been watching alchemy stars too closely and so I missed a little bit of this but essentially we have like I guess three or four pieces of big news the first is that it is officially announced that alchemy stars will be launching on June 17th today is actually June 12th for me so it's about like five or six days away it's pretty hype we already kind of knew this especially when they put out like the pre-registration registration dates on like the Apple App Store and all that and it was like June 17th already. With that being said, let's move on to the second piece of news, which isn't this one, but it's actually this one over here. So if you have a look at this, you can see all of these characters. So they are not Alchemy Stars characters. However, these are collabs with Niji Sanji. Niji Sanji are essentially like your Hollow Lives or like your VTubers, except I think they're predominantly JP based. I'm not sure if there is an English presence or if there is a CM presence or whatever, but like these guys, essentially, I think it's very, very similar to what we got from Princess Connect. Alchemy Stars JP are essentially teaming up with these guys. These guys will probably be playing the game at launch. They'll be helping promote the game and hopefully, you know, that brings in like that bigger player base. I think if Alchemy Stars have got money to do this, I think they're doing all right, to be honest. So for you guys who are like VTuber fans or like Holy Life fans or whatever, consider like having a look at this. Maybe you could catch some of their streams or some of their videos, but that's there if you want it. All right, let's move on to the most important piece of news, which is a little bit bad because I am a little bit late about this. And that is that about like 10 days ago, they actually started a pre-registration event. It's actually kind of like a web gacha event. And so if I click into it, you actually come onto this page over here. So in a nutshell, what it is, is you have to log in with your Facebook or your Twitter account, and then you come down here and you get to draw. Essentially, whichever character you land on, like, or you want to keep, you can actually redeem them when the game launches. This is cool because the character pool actually includes from three to five stars. However, again, I am mentioning this a bit late, but if you guys have been following the Alchemy Stars news, hopefully you guys are already on this. So what I really want to talk about today is like a tier list. I want to talk about how I feel about like your target rerolls, who you should be looking at and why. As always guys, if you guys have a preference, if you guys have a waifu, you guys roll for them first. With that being said, we are going to jump into a existing resource that somebody has already put together actually. This document is by Julie Wen and they shared it on Discord and so I just had a quick look and I wanted to really, I guess, share my thoughts around this. This person has done a lot of the analysis, they put in a couple of stats and stuff, however, I do have a couple of different opinions. Big shout out to Julie Wen, it's always easy easy to critique it like I'm about to, but it's always really hard to actually come up with the content. So again, big shout out to Julie Wen. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So we have essentially, I think five, five stars that you can actually pull from this web gacha. So you've got Oddy, you've got Leona, you've got Vivian, Robin, and Noah. So let's talk about each one. However, let's have a look at what Julie Wen says at the very start. So the first thing that he mentions, and probably the thing that I should have mentioned, is that Robin is semi-exclusive to this event. So if I go back over here, you see this character over here, that's Robin. Robin is semi-limited in the way that she is not going to be available for the first six months of the game. Why are they doing that? I don't know. They're probably just trying to like, you know, hook everyone in. And before I go any further, I do want to say that this is only for the App Store Google players that are not in the US regions. Honestly, I still don't know why they did this. Like for some reason, US is being separated from everyone else. Me, I'm Aussie. I'm obviously going to the global or the C server. Probably the global server, but I don't think at this point it matters. From what I can tell, there's actually no like latency dependent PVP or like other game modes like that. So at this point in the game, Robin can only be given out in this pre-registration lucky draw. I'm not really a big fan of it because it means that people can miss out on it, but Tool Dog Studios seem to be a fan of this and that it's whatever. It, it is what it is. It's the same kind of thing with CBT players. They are insistent on giving like the CBT players some special reward. Okay, now that I've introduced you to Robin, let's keep going. And essentially he's saying that Noah is worse than Robin, which I agree with. <laughs> I think the most important thing he says is the foolproof plan is just to roll five accounts, one for each character and decide later. What I'm going to say here is that this is actually quite hard because Twitter and Facebook are pretty notorious for like banning alt accounts. Their algorithms are actually pretty good at picking up like whether you're going to be using it for like these kinds of purposes. It's really annoying to be honest. And honestly, like if you guys are hardcore enough to do that, I would say do it. But otherwise, if you guys are just chilling, then I would say my 
foolproof plan is to just hit one of the five stars, except for Noah. That's pretty much the TLDR for this video. It hit anyone but Noah. All right, with that being said, I've thrown enough shade on Noah, or well, I guess we can throw a little bit more later, but let's start with Oddi. So Oddi is a green green support with these kinds of stats. What I want to mention first is that these stats are comparatively lower than the stats of the other five stars. However, she does have some relatively strong skills. So this is a chunk of text I don't really want to talk to. I want to talk to this document over here. And this document is prepared by Pepe, a massive fan of Pepe's work. He has a lot of like compilations of information, like assets and stuff like that. So massive shout out to Pepe. And I am going to have a look at Oddi. Let's have a go. So as you guys know, typically every character has like two skills, the active skill, which is this one over here and the chain or the passive skills, which is over here. One is not more important than the other. You do have to consider both of them. So let's have a look at this one first. 400% damage to all enemies and inflict slow for two turns and two stacks of poison for two turns. The slow is essentially a debuff, which reduces the travel distance of the enemies. As of the CBT, I believe it reduces it by half. As for poison, I believe every stack of poison. So in this case, we have two stacks. Each stack will inflict 1% max HP damage to the enemy unit. So in this case, it's going to be 2% max HP over two rounds. So that comes to 4% in total. Okay, so that's that one. And then we have the normal attacks can attack enemies on a diagonal grid and have a 70% chance of inflicting one stack of poison for two rounds. So as you can see, Oddi is really focused around the poison mechanic. Obviously, if you can build a team that's around this like poison mechanic, she is actually a really good addition. Coming back over to this document, Julie Wen reckons that this is the best character of these five. This is probably where I personally disagree the most. I think she is okay. I don't think she is actually that strong. So first, I really want to talk about this guy over here, and it's mainly the poison. Aside from it doing like really good damage up front, the poison is kind of lackluster. In this game, what you're really, really pressed for is rounds or time, right? So if you guys don't know how this works, essentially you make a bunch of moves and then your enemy makes a bunch of moves and then you make a bunch of moves and each one like counts as a round, right? And so typically to clear a stage, you only have about like 15 rounds or like 10 rounds, something like that, right? The last disadvantage of poison is that you can only have up to five stacks of poison. So what that means is that realistically, you can only chunk away 5% HP per turn. I don't know if you guys have checked out my CBT video, but like enemies were dying like left and right. And again, like you don't have like 20 turns to wait for a 5% like tick. I think it's some nice chip damage. If you're able to maintain five stacks of poison as well as just keep playing the game, then yeah, I think it's pretty good. And if you're waiting for stacks of poison to like kill off the enemy, I don't think it's gonna like work out for you. So unless you're stacking poisons, Oddi in a vacuum, I think is not that strong. Everything about her kit is solid, but I don't think she is to the point of like objectively the best. Obviously, this is my opinion. You can definitely like, you know, talk about Julie Wen's opinion. I think there is some like sound reasoning here, but like all in all, I think Oddi is good, but like not a top priority kind of thing. To be honest, if we're talking about tier lists or priorities, I would honestly settle for any of these five stars except for Noah. Oddi, in my opinion, is still pretty good, but not the best. As always, guys, if you guys have a preference or a waifu, like Vivian is fine. You roll for them first and just kind of like forget about whether they are like meta or whatever. Honestly, I think all five of these units, they're not game breaking. None of them are really game breaking. Okay, so next we've got Leona who is a red red sniper with these kinds of stats. So these are actually some pretty respectable stats. She has the same active skill as Vice, which is a really nice skill. I really like it. Deals 90% damage six times to random enemies on the field. Launches one additional attack for each fire tile within 12 adjacent tiles. So what this means is essentially you have six homing hits. No matter where they are on the field, you'll be dealing at least 540% damage here. And then if you have more fire tiles, you can do even more. I am a pretty big fan of this skill. I am a pretty big fan of Vice's skill. So Vice, if you guys don't know, is the starting character that you get. She is a five-star sniper unit, actually very similar to Leona. And essentially her active is the same, but she's blue. I think this is a very, very solid skill. And the reason is because it is both like a single target and an AOE skill. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not like true AOE, but it functionally could be like very similar. Functionally, very similar outcomes. However, it also has the added benefit of like being a really strong single target thing as well. If there is only one enemy left, then you're going to be doing like six times 90% damage to them. What really ends up happening a lot in the game is that you're going to have a lot of like stragglers. You're going to have some enemies running away. You're going to have a lot of enemies like, you know, in like some random secluded corner of the map. I think this really, really helps that, especially if you can't reach them. Okay. On the other hand, we have normal attacks have a 50% chance to trigger one red dragon and that deals damage equal to 50% of Leona's normal attack damage and inflicts one stack of burning for two rounds. That is a real mouthful, but essentially it is an extra bit of damage. In a nutshell, in summary, Leona does like good damage. I think that is the best way to describe her. She doesn't really offer any utility. She doesn't convert or paint. 
She doesn't teleport. She doesn't really do anything except a lot of damage. Personally, I think she is a solid pick and I probably would pick her over Oddie. Some people call her noob bait, but I think she is pretty solid. Okay, so moving on, one of the more important things that Julie Wen says is that the chain combo at max is a splatter. So I will leave a picture of what a splatter looks like up there and you guys can have a look. It's essentially a three tiles in eight cardinal directions. So it's kind of like an eight thing. I personally think it's quite good. It's not the best one, but it is quite good. The last thing about this is that it is on a three turn cooldown, which is actually quite fast. All in all, this is probably one of like my favorite types of skills in the game. Okay, after that, we have Vivian, who is a yellow blue sniper. So this is our first time seeing a yellow blue sniper. So you guys have seen before we had red, red, and we had green, green. So what exactly does a yellow blue sniper mean? So say you start on level zero, ascension zero, and then you hit like level 30 or 50. I can't remember what it was. When you hit that max level, you can then ascend and then you start again and then you go a bit further. Very similar to your Ark Knights, like elite two kind of looking thing. So when you hit ascension three, which is your max one, you get a second element for some characters. What this means is that they actually activate when you run on those tiles as well. So guys, I don't want to keep referring back to it, but to check out my CBT videos, it runs through a lot of the mechanics if you don't know what that means. So essentially, in a nutshell, Vivian is being treated as both a yellow and a blue character. Okay, so just a quick look at her stats. She's okay, like she has less attack than some of the other units such as Leona, but in return, she has a little bit more HP, but eh, I'd rather take more attack. However, Vivian is just mint. The design mint. The character, mint. Waifu, mint. Okay, so without further ado, let's hop over here and she is going to be, I believe, a forest? Nope, she was a thunder. So let's have a look at her skill. She's got hybrid buff, which is dealing 320% damage to all enemies. Off to a great start. And then you've got converts one enemy tile to yellow. Another great thing. And then we've got all thunder Aurorians chain combo triggering costs minus one for the round. So again, for you newer players, if you get a chain combo of like three versus six versus eight versus 12 versus 15 or whatever, there are actually milestones that like change the effects of the skills. So for example, if I take Vivian and I walk her up like three squares, she's going to do something. But if I'm able to walk her up to like, let's say eight squares, then that skill is actually going to drastically change. And typically it's this skill over here. Usually it changes in the form of area of effect or like number of hits or like damage. So like sometimes it might turn from like squares into rows, into columns, into like big AOE, like wider and wider, or just more damage and stuff like that. I think that at the highest levels of play, this is probably going to be really, really massive. For the real min maxes, for the ones that are really, really big brain, I'd probably recommend Vivian. I don't know if I'm big enough brain for her, but she is the only one I think out of all of these other characters that have like some like really nice utility. Me personally, whenever it comes to tactics or strategy games, I always value utility. To be honest, in all games, I value utility. It's just like way harder to power creep utility. Venti from Genshin Impact with this freaking vacuum like and kill everything. That's like so broken. Being able to convert tiles as well as like lowering everyone's chain combo requirements by one, that is honestly really freaking good. The last thing about this is that this is only on a three turn cooldown, which is really, really good. So yeah, I think this is probably one of the top tier skills here. Okay, so we've got the skill over here. Whenever chain combos deal a damage to all enemies, water, thunder, and illumina, Aurorians gain 6% of Vivian's attack as an attack bonus for two rounds. Okay, so this is good. The reason why I say pretty good is because it has the requirements of water, thunder, and illumina Aurorians. And what that means is that to take advantage of this, you kind of have to like build around these requirements. Honestly, it is really straightforward and I I think it is worth building around this. And so again, with that being said, I do think that Vivian is probably one of the top priorities. At this point, I would probably say like Vivian and Leona and then the Poison Lady Oddie. So if I come back over here, let's see what he says about Vivian. As you can see, some of the other characters have like massive like cooldowns on their skills. Sometimes they are incredibly game changing. This is actually a really game changing skill. But in my opinion, if you're going into a stage more blind, I reckon a lower cooldown is better. But again, that is just an opinion and especially a difference in play style. This is nothing like Arc Knights where you can kind of like copy strats and just like go away with it. I would argue that you probably have to use your brain a little bit more in this game. Okay, so let's see what Julian has to say about Vivian and he is saying that there are a couple of synergies but he's not really a big fan of the chain combo counter reduction. He thinks it's kind of hard to optimally use and I do kind of agree. Overall, it feels like a mixed bag with nothing that stands out greatly. Okay, you know what? Fair enough. Like I said, I do think like, you know, this is a really, really big brain character. I think the skill floor for this one is pretty low, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. However, I do think that the skill ceiling for Vivian is probably the highest. And so yeah, I guess I do have quite a different opinion to Julie Wen. However, there is another opinion here. And again, I will link this down in the description
description below. What you're going to get out of this video is you're going to have two opinions, Julie Wen's and mine as well. And so at the end of this, what you can do is look at both of our opinions and then make a decision for yourself. But yeah, in summary, I think that Vivian is a top pick if you're really big brain, but he is not too big of a fan. Like she's solid. She's okay. Okay. So let's move on to Robin. So the biggest thing about Robin is like her elevated stats. So as you can see, Robin is a green yellow detonator. So detonator is essentially AOE based units. On the other hand, if I go back up, we've got snipers. Snipers are typically more like single target units. That really is the only distinction. They are both like DPS based. Okay. Let's have a look at this attack, defense, and HP. So the first thing you notice is that her stats are actually quite elevated. 2561909. You can already see it like trumps everyone else. However, the key thing about Robin, and to be honest, it's one critique that I have for this entire guide. It's that Robin cannot be compared to the rest of them because she is not going to be able to get dupes for the next six months. So what that means is that her power ceiling is actually going to be significantly lower than the rest of them. Obviously, this means that you do have to luck sack into dupes for the other units, but like there's a better chance of that than like not being able to get Robins at all, right? So with that in mind, Robin, I would say is probably one of the weakest ones here. With that being said though, I'm probably going to try target her if I can, because I am just a sucker for limited units and stuff and I am a collector. If you're a collector, this whole video just has like no meaning to you. You go for Robin. And even if you aren't, Robin will be made available in six months. So don't even worry about it. Okay. So what about her skills itself? So Robin, I believe is a forest. And as you can see, she deals 260% damage to 13 tiles in a diamond shape. And I will show you guys that over here. Don't worry guys. I will cover these shapes in like my mechanics kind of beginner's guide thing coming very soon. So if you guys haven't already, consider a sub. So the good thing about this diamond shape thing is that she is actually able to target this. A lot of the units, what you're going to see is that they're actually not going to be able to like target where they do their AOEs. So as you can see, Robin deals only 260% damage. And I want to say that because like, I want to point your attention to up to here. I don't know how to say her name, but Saikari. I don't know how to say her name, but like Sikare maybe? Saikari, Saikare. Her ratios are 480% damage in a cross shape. So there are actually a couple of reasons why this is so significantly lower. And in my opinion, the biggest point is this over here. You have a one selected tile. So the difference between Robin and Sikare I'm not going to even try, is that her cross shape is going to be done around her. It's a point blank AOE. It's PB AOE. However, in Robin's case, she can actually aim it somewhere. And so in return, the trade-off is that it does less damage. On top of that, it also converts one enemy tile to an enhanced tile. And so what that does, it essentially it allows you to do a little bit more damage. Okay, so opinions on this. First of all, three round CD, that's pretty good. Especially if you're able to aim this at somewhere, I think that this is a pretty good skill. Obviously, it's not doing like a crazy amount of damage, but like I think the utility in that is quite good. There's not much to be said about that, like enhanced tile, like it's okay. But yeah, in essence, I think this is a decent skill. It's got a little bit of targeted, which I like a lot. Okay, so then we've got increase all deployed members damage against enemies occupying green grids by 9%. And why I'm not a fan of this is because it has such a tight requirement. If you guys think back to what's her name, uh, Vivian over here, at least the requirements for her is water or thunder or illumina. You have three different groups of Aurorians that you can control. If we go back to Robin, what you're going to notice is that it is for enemies enemies occupying green grids. There's only one way to control that, and that is to actually paint or convert those grids that the enemies are standing on to green. I personally think that is a waste of painting or converting. And the reason is because why wouldn't you just convert to somewhere where you can get like a longer chain combo or where you can just like get more damage on them. It's not something that's useless, but in my opinion, it's a little bit hard to utilize because of the way that you should play. And so therefore, I'm not a big fan of this skill. So Robin, in summary, she's okay, but I'm going to say that she's probably one of like the least strongest ones here. And so I think Julie Wen actually says very, very similar things. He touches on a couple of different points. I touch on a couple of different points, but I think in the end, we kind of do say like the same thing. She's okay. She's not great and probably lower priority. Okay, last we've got Noah. Oh my Lord, a blue, blue support stats over here. You already know what it is. These are decent above average stats in my opinion. However, let's go over to his skills. So we've got Noah over here, gains 10% of Noah's HP as a shield up to 200% for every blue grid for one round. In addition to that, we have using an active skill increases Noah's defense by 50% for one round. I am not a big fan of this skill, nor this guy. And the reason is because of this, it's only for one round. In my opinion, the redeeming factor to this skill is that the fact that it is an active skill. Shields are something that needs to be proactive. So for example, if you know you're going to get hit, then you're going to shield up. And so for it being an active skill, it kind of redeems it. And so with that being said, let's move on to this one over here. And so when the shield disappears, convert 
converts 30% of the remaining shield to HP. This one is kind of funky. So what this is essentially saying is that if you use less of your shield, if you get hit less, then you're going to get more HP. You're going to be healed according to the amount of shield that you had left. But the point of a shield is that it can soak up damage so that you don't take damage. In my opinion, don't look at it as too much of a con or a disadvantage. I think you should look at it more as a bonus. On the other hand, we have increases Noah's defense by 50% if a shield already exists. That's pretty good. In a vacuum, it's pretty good. However, realistically speaking, you're really only going to have like one or two maybe max supports or heals in a team. On top of that, to really leverage this, you're probably going to want to be stacking shields. I don't think that the other like top tier supports or whatever actually like supports this. I personally think that there are just like other really solid healers or like really solid shielders, especially in the blue archetype. I think blue is probably one of like the most well-rounded like elements in the game right now. And so it's for that kind of reason that I probably wouldn't pick up Noah. Like it's okay, kind of lackluster. I'm not really a big fan of the one round kind of thing. In my opinion, at this very moment, and this could definitely change like if we get more levels in like the Spire and stuff, but I don't think this is that good unless you come up with like some cheese strat or something. Maybe you can stack shields and like avoid like one hit kills from bosses or something. I don't know. Maybe he's going to like shoot up to top tier one day and then I'll have to eat my own words. But like, you know what? We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So yeah, Noah, not a big fan. I think there are other units in his archetype, in his element that does his job better at this moment in the game. So again, let's head back to Julie Wen. And I think like generally speaking, he's kind of like has the same opinion as me. But as always, you can run through this and read it in your own time. I don't think I actually use Julie Wen's um, guide too much, but it's a, it's a good reference to have a look at. In my opinion, it is always good to have another opinion. You can't just watch me and then trust everything I say, right? Maybe some things I say is wrong. Maybe some things he says is wrong. And then together you can form like a better opinion. What Julie Wen does really well is he actually has a really good grasp of the mechanics. For, so for example, this one, we have Noah's HP capping out at 200%. That is something that I definitely did not know. So even if you watch this video, I definitely would advise you to check this guide out. Okay, so with that being said, I am going to have a final tier list. And in my opinion, this is what it looks like. For first place, I've got Vivian and Leona. After that, I've got Oddie. And then I've got Robin. And then I've got Noah. Again, these are really just like indicative based on the data that we have during CBT, based on the gameplay that we had during CBT, the stats and all of that. And so this could all change. But at this point in time, that is what I recommend. But like, I want to say it again. I don't think like, you know, not getting one of these characters is going to break your game. Okay, guys, I think that's it. This is going to be a very, very long video. And I'm very sorry about that. But this is probably going to be one of my first in-depth Alchemy Stars video, only an indication of what's about to come next. And so with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video and let's go. I've got a secret question for you guys. And that is, well, who are you going to be re-rolling for? As for me, I would go for Vivian if Robin didn't exist. I personally don't care about like Vivian's like big brain moves, but like, just look at that mint. However, my collectionist like kind of behavior is urging me to get Robin. And so I'm going to be trying for Robin. There are maybe only like three or four days of this. So like, you know, go guys, go try, like do your best in re-rolling. But yeah, my opinion aside, you guys let me know who you're going for and drop it down in the comments below. I really appreciate it. Leaving a comment just means that you've made it to the end of the video. And I am really grateful for that. I've spent a lot of time like learning, compiling and like, you know, making comparisons and all that. And so it feels like my time is being appreciated. Okay. With that being said, ending sequence, if you have enjoyed this video or found it kind of helpful then consider a like a sub a comment a pin a sub and as always thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you guys in the next video bye